All right, a very good time to you all, and if you want to sing along, you can, you're very welcome. And all the gifts are all free. All right, God bless you. Thank you, Father God, that you are the God of all creation. Here to 
because he had God with him and I can tell you we've got God with us and when we pray for people many miracles can happen so God bless you all and keep you all safe and well in Jesus name Amen Good morning everybody you're probably wondering where we've come from We'd often get asked, which church do you belong to? Well, there's not a simple answer. We belong to several churches in, the, in, in Exmouth itself. Baptist, um, Church of England, community churches. So that's where we're from. And we've got today, we, we've, got, we've come to bring, each of us, each individually, have come to bring a message for you from the Bible. It's the gospel message, known as the good news. And I don't, I don't apologise for saying it's the most important message that you can ever hear in, the, in your entire life is this good news from the Bible about the Lord. And each of us is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ in different ways, ways that we, we can relate, hopefully. Now today, I don't know if you've ever considered what sort of person Jesus was. I mean... We often hear from the scholars and people that read the Bible, oh, he was a good person, and that's true. And he, he healed a lot of people, and that's true as well. In fact, he healed more people than what's been recorded in the Bible. And he also um, taught good things. He taught us how to live a, a life that was going to mean that we were going to be happy and we were going to be prosperous in our life and not doom and gloom. He had a good message to preach. But you know, you can also tell a person what sort of person they are by the, the people they spend their time with. So I just want to look at the time, the time that Jesus spent with people and the sort of people that he spent his time with. Now, looking at the first people that he called to follow him were the disciples. And Jesus had more followers than the disciples. He had hundreds of people that followed him. But these 12 disciples, they were with him 24-7. They were with him through three plus years, every day, night and day. And Jesus spent a lot of time with them, as you can imagine. Now, what sort of people were these disciples? Well, the first four that he chose were fishermen. I would say common fishermen. Men that were uneducated. They didn't know anything about religion very much. They, they got a job to do. They were skilled in what they did. They caught fish. They were able to do that. They were able to fix nets and fix a boat. So they're quite handy with their hands. They also um, were able to stay out at sea and not be sick. They, um, they probably smelt of fish. They had a bad accent. And they probably swore quite a bit. But that's, that's my assumption of summing up what these four fishermen would have been like. And not only that, worse than that, they came from a place in Galilee. Um, now, the Galileans were looked down upon. Galilee was a really bad postcode for Israel. You didn't want to have to say you'd come from Galilee. If you were comparing it to London, then you'd say you come from the east end of London, not the posh west end. So that's the fisherman. Now, worse than that, he chose another person, and that was the fifth person, and that was Matthew. Now, Matthew was a tax collector, and I don't think anybody here would particularly like tax collectors, but it's regulated now. It wasn't regulated in Jesus' time, and these tax collectors collected more tax from the people than they should have done. They had a bad conscience. They were fraudsters. They pocketed the extra cash and took it home with them. And they, they were not, um, they were so looked down upon that they weren't invited to places. They didn't go in the temple. They weren't invited back to people. And anybody who was anybody wouldn't even associate with them. Now, on 
top of that, the religious leaders of their time didn't like it either. But who the people were that Jesus chose to follow him. I mean, if Jesus was here today in the flesh, what sort of people would you expect him to associate with? Maybe you might say, oh well he'd, he'd, uh, he'd associate with the bishops from all the nations. These religious people that studied hard and they know all about God and, uh, and they've got all the paraphernalia to prove it. Or they might, you might say, well maybe the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, he'd spend time with him. And he may do. But also you'd say, oh well he's bound to go to, the, to, to Rome to, the, to see the Pope. He's bound to spend a lot of time with the Pope. But you know, Jesus, when he walked this earth, he didn't spend time with the religious leaders. In fact, the religious leaders were against Jesus, and one of the accusations that they brought to him was this. Why is it that you eat and you associate with tax collectors and sinners and people who shouldn't even be, you shouldn't even be speaking to, you don't even allow them to touch you? I mean, what sort of person are you? You don't you realise that these are outcasts, that you should ignore them, that you should avoid them? And you know what Jesus' reply was? Well, quite simple. He said, I didn't come for, ta I didn't come for, the, for people who were righteous. For people who think they're righteous, for those that say, I'm all right, Jack, I've got a place in heaven, God loves me, um, all that I do, I say long prayers, I do all the right things, and I keep the law. No, Jesus said, I've come for those that have got a need of me, those that recognise that they need me. He came for needy people like me like many of you. You might feel you're needy, you might not. You might feel that, oh yes, I'm self-justified. But either way, the most important person on earth that has ever lived came here for needy people. And he's still interested in needy people today. So after the accusation, the, why, did, why did these people follow Jesus? Why did these disciples leave everything they had? They dropped their nets, they left their home, their family, their associates, their workplace. They, what, I mean, what were they going to live off? Was it, was it going to be a good remuneration for them? Were they going to get wages? No. Were they going to get to somewhere nice to sleep every night and in a good accommodation? Not that either. But what they, what they heard was, follow me, and they followed Jesus. And it was jaw-dropping experience for them, because when they followed Jesus, what they saw was amazing. They saw people who had been born deformed, people who had been born blind, healed. People healed all over. Every time Jesus met with people, people were pressing on him to be healed. And, and they heard words of life that they'd never have heard anywhere else. They knew they'd made that right choice. But you know what? Jesus said to them, you didn't choose me, I chose you. So they didn't have to choose Jesus. He chose them and he called them. Now, I want to ask you today, how do you know if Jesus is calling you? How would you know that? Well, I want to just simplify it. I want to say that you'll know if Jesus is calling you, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You'll know that Jesus is calling you if you believe he rose from the dead, that he paid the price for your sins, and you'll believe that he's coming back for you, that this isn't it, this isn't the end of things. So if you believe those things, or even part of those things, then please come and have a word with us today. We want to hear from you, we want to hear your opinion, we want to hear what you think. So if you can believe, we will lead you in prayer to the Lord today. Thank you.